Jakarta, the largest capital in Southeast Asia, is facing a unique challenge. It's sinking faster than any other city in the world. Despite dealing with issues like disease, intense flooding, too many people, and the serious climate crisis, Jakarta is still standing. But here's the surprising solution from the Indonesian government. They want to create a brand new capital called Nusantara from the ground up. This new city aims to be a dreamlike place powered by clean green energy. Join us in today's video as we explore all the fascinating details about this upcoming mega city. Welcome to Superstructures, Indonesia's planned new capital, situated in East Kalimantan on Borneo Island, goes by the name Nusantara, meaning archipelago in Javanese. This choice reflects the country's growing ambitions for economic and strategic influence. The ambitious relocation project comes with a hefty price tag of around 35 billion and by the year 2045, Nusantara is anticipated to be home to nearly 2 million people. The government envisions attracting local and global talents to make this new capital a thriving community. Undoubtedly, this is one of the most significant infrastructure ventures ever undertaken by the Indonesian government. Indonesia is embarking on the colossal task of building a new capital because its current one, Jakarta, is facing insurmountable challenges. Jakarta, accommodating over 11 million residents that frequently surge to 30 million, is sinking, literally. Built on a delta system of 13 rivers, 40% of the city is currently submerged. Overpopulation compounds the issue, preventing water from seeping into the soil and leading to persistent flooding. The situation is expected to worsen due to climate change, population growth, and crumbling infrastructure. Jakarta's challenges, including traffic congestion and flooding, result in an annual loss of around $6 billion in productivity. To alleviate these pressures, the Indonesian government has decided to construct a new capital. Currently, Java, particularly Jakarta, contributes significantly to Indonesia's GDP, making up 60% with Jakarta alone contributing one-fifth of the country's GDP. In contrast, the regions of Kalimantan contribute less than 10% to the total GDP, despite their wealth in resources like coal, gold, and oil. Many Indonesians residing outside Java have expressed feeling neglected, as most of the country's wealth is concentrated in Jakarta. By relocating the capital to East Kalimantan, the government aims to stimulate more investments in the outer provinces, fostering inclusivity and development. Discussions about moving Indonesia's capital have been ongoing for some time, with the idea first proposed by Indonesia's first president, Sukarno, in 1957. However, the plan was abandoned, and Jakarta was officially declared the capital in the 1960s. It wasn't until 2021 that a comprehensive master plan for the capital relocation was developed. The notion of constructing a new capital on the island of Borneo, 800 miles away from Jakarta, was initially proposed in 2019 by President Joko Widodo. The primary objectives were to address economic inequality in Indonesia and alleviate the strain on Jakarta and the densely populated island of Java. Following the announcement, the Indonesian parliament passed a law to facilitate the proposed capital relocation. East Kalimantan was chosen as the site for the new capital, with factors such as its central location in the Indonesian archipelago and its immunity to certain natural disasters, including earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis influencing the decision. East Kalimantan, known for its jungles and orangutan population, currently has a population of only 3.7 million people. The strategic move to relocate the capital to East Kalimantan aligns with Indonesia's ambitions to assert itself as a dynamic Indo-Pacific power, leveraging its strategically central location. The nation's clear objective to establish maritime dominance in the region is evident. The magnitude of constructing a new capital is staggering, as the upcoming administrative center of Indonesia is slated to span an area of inland forests exceeding 200,000 hectares, roughly three times the size of New York City. Following the approval by the Indonesian parliament in August 2022, 
the groundbreaking ceremony marked the commencement of construction at the new capital site. A key focus in the initial phase is the development of the Sepaku Ring Road, a vital access route to Nusantara, which is reportedly 80% complete. Acquiring land and formulating a comprehensive engineering plan are also top priorities during this phase, spanning from 2022 to 2024. The Indonesian Public and Works and Public Housing Ministry has allocated $350 million to support the initial infrastructure development. Nusantara's development plan encompasses both soft and hard infrastructure, encompassing urban utilities, manufacturing facilities, seaports, airports, and a robust network and communication system. The phased approach begins with crucial elements like the presidential palace, central government offices, residential areas for government employees, and facilities for military and police personnel. The ambitious vision for New Centara includes a commitment to sourcing 100% of its energy from renewable sources and ensuring 80% of mobility relies on public transport, cycling, or walking. The government envisions transforming the new capital into a low-carbon hub, fostering growth in healthcare and technology while promoting sustainable development beyond Java. Put simply, Nusantara aims to be a smart city, integrating information, communication, and technology to enhance operational effectiveness and deliver improved government services. The substantial investment required for its development opens up significant opportunities for foreign businesses. While the Indonesian government will contribute just under 60% of the required $35 billion for construction, the remaining funds will be sourced from the private sector. Despite planners' intentions to sidestep issues associated with private investment, such as inequality and corruption, they find themselves reliant on it to secure the necessary funds for city construction. The Nusantara project is currently in its initial phase, facing delays exacerbated by factors such as the COVID-19 pandemic. Achieving the ambitious goals set for the new capital appears to be a formidable challenge for some. The government aims to relocate its presidential palace and other offices to the new capital by early 2024, yet construction activities have only just commenced. Japanese investors, who visited the site in June 2022, expressed confusion as they found little development apart from trees and a sign reading, Nusantara Ground Zero. Subsequently, they withdrew their funding, citing a lack of a clear vision for the project. With Japan's exit, Indonesia is reportedly seeking financial support from Middle Eastern nations like Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates, as well as China. The chosen site for the new capital is in close proximity to the Mahakam Lakes, an area known for its scenic peatlands, and as the habitat of the endangered Irrawaddy dolphin. Notably, peatland fires in this region contributed significantly to the haze that frequently blankets parts of Indonesia. The area is also home to diverse wildlife, including orangutans in their natural habitat. Environmental concerns have been raised, suggesting that the construction of the new city might lead to the expansion of palm oil plantations and settlements, potentially threatening the rich biodiversity and lush rainforests. Indigenous groups from Borneo have expressed worries about the potential impact on their environment and culture, fearing that their villages might be destroyed. Additionally, there are concerns regarding the lack of legal mechanisms for compensating indigenous landowners, as the government does not recognize ancestral land claims. Indonesia's decision to change its capital follows a trend seen in other countries like Brazil, Pakistan, Nigeria, and Egypt which have all opted for newly planned and constructed cities to address various challenges. However, the success rate of such endeavors has been historically low. For instance, Brasilia in Brazil brought about increased segregation, and Myanmar's Naipidao is now an abandoned city resembling a ghost town. Nigeria's Abuja, while accelerating urbanization, faced challenges in providing affordable housing, leading to the creation of more slums. The historical case of Delhi, which became India's new capital in 1911, highlights challenges such as severe air pollution despite its significance today. 
In the coming years, numerous countries may follow the trend of building new capitals to alleviate the challenges faced by their overcrowded existing capital cities. Nusantara's development could serve as a valuable example for other nations considering capital relocation, offering insights into potential solutions or lessons to be learned. Share your opinions on this project in the comments and don't miss out on future updates by subscribing to Superstructures. Stay tuned for our next video.